Well, welcome back, everybody. My name's Andrew, and you're watching the Kelly's Country Life. So you're probably wondering, what on earth am I doing up here in the tractor basket today? Well, finally, and I mean finally, after two and a half weeks of no rain, they're calling for the next many, many days at least a good chance of rain. 30, 40, 50% for day after day after day. We will gladly take it. Now, chances are it's going to be afternoon thunderstorms, which could blow rain all in the house. So that's what we're focusing on. But we'll take everything we can get. I know a lot of y'all look at the camera, look at the yard, and it looks green to you, but the yard is actually quite dead. I have a lot of grass that is burn up, gone, and cannot be revived. It's so far gone. Actually, a lot of that new grass seed that I planted, that young tender grass, a lot of it has wilted and burn up. So, uh, oh, we desperately need some rain. I'm watering the garden more than I ever have, twice a day, spending probably an hour and a half a day between tending to the garden and just watering. And I'm still winding up with vegetables that are burning up, wilting, and uh, just not making it. I've never had to water so much ever. 90 something degree days and no rain for weeks is bad news. So hopefully we get some rain here before long, before fires start. So let me show you what I've got. So I've been trying to figure out how to keep the rain out of this building without spending a ton of money because in just a couple weeks, we're gonna be sheathing and closing this thing up. So the last thing I wanna do is go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff that's gonna cost a pile of money. So I was in the hardware store yesterday, found these rolls of plastic sheathing. I've used this stuff before, it's basically a vapor barrier. And I found them in 15 foot by 25 foot long rolls. Reasonable enough, nails, rolls of plastic, everything to do the one side of the building, about 50 bucks, I can handle that. I've looked at tarps and all, but they have went through the roof. Everything has gotten so expensive here lately. I mean, I would have a hundred something dollars just in two or three tarps to cover. There's probably 150 bucks now that I think about it. And like medium to light duty tarps, not the good stuff. So I just couldn't justify spending the money on that for gigantic tarps that I probably won't use later on down the road. It's typically smaller tarps that I use. So we're gonna nail some of this plastic up. My gut says it's probably still gonna rip off in some of these afternoon thunderstorms. It's worth a shot to keep all the water out of the building because now that I've got all the interior walls done, it's gonna be very hard to get water out of the building if it blows in there. So before we get any rain, they're calling for some for potential for some this afternoon. We're gonna do this. Now, once we get this knocked out, we got a house episode today. We're gonna to jump inside and start putting up some attic rafters. I don't know how many we'll get up because I've actually got to finish a few other things in there for the last video that I've still got to go edit. I know it gets confusing. And we gotta knock this plastic out. So let's do this before any rain shows up. So I bought these plastic cap nails, which are good for holding down material like this. They're used for underlayment on roofs and on the uh, sides of buildings. Now, I just don't wanna go too crazy with too many of them because I have to pull these back out later.
Okay, well, it should look a little different in here now. It's kind of echoey too. <laughs> so the only bad thing about getting all this plastic up is I have just really kill, killed my airflow. Now, eventually, once I get the house dried in, that's not going to matter anyways. I'm not going to get any airflow without doing forced ventilation of some sort. But uh, as many days of rain as they're calling for a chance, I figure this is smart to do now. Now, honestly, I do expect this to rip off in the wind. I'm not going to put 10,000 nails out there in it, but where it's really going to give me a fit is in here to where I've only got it nailed up top just a couple spots because there's no wall there. But honestly, once I start laying the rafters down, I've got to nail in from the outside anyways in nail the rafters. So I'm going to have to rip down that top section and just kind of keep it draped over in here. So uh, it is going to be in the way some, but we'll see if we can keep water from just pouring in here and puddling up in all the rooms and then trying to figure out how to deal with it. So this should help. Oh my goodness, y'all. What is this stuff? Oh, thank you. There's not much on the radar, but I'll take every little bit we can get. It has been weeks since we have had some good water and rain. I hope we get several days of this. Perfect. Alright, so I've got to make a mark down the dead center of these top plates because we have two pieces of lumber that's going to meet together up here and then we're going to put them together with what's called a mending plate. And the reason we're putting two pieces of lumber together is because I don't have 30 foot wide lumber around here and even if you could find it, it would never be straight, but that just doesn't exist. So again, we want both of these to butt together and meet. I want dead center of this post, so I'm getting the same, or dead center of these top plates, so I'm getting the same amount of overlap on each two by eight rafter and uh, i'm gonna do that with my square right here a lot of people don't realize speed square have notches up here you see this says half inch those notches are every half inch this is quarter on this particular square and i know that a piece of lumber a two by four is three and a half inches wide so i want to put a mark at an inch and three quarters there's the one inch mark there's three quarter if you go down and find that notch that is actually made to hold a pencil so all i've got to do is put that square up there put the pencil down in that notch and slide it and it'll mark the dead center of this as far as I want to run it. Now I know a lot of y'all understand speed squares but a lot of people don't so I thought I'd throw that out there. I'm almost tempted to make a speed square video one day because there are so many things that these do. Most people think it's just for drawing straight lines and 45s. Well it does that great but it does so much more on here. All these numbers represent something.
Now before I put these rafters up, it is critical that you crown rafters, without a doubt. So, we've talked about crowning before. This board right here actually has a slight bow in it, or a crown, toward the top. You do not want to put a board, if I can get my finger right, bowed down like that, because then it creates a sag in the season, or a ceiling. Plus a board strongest, anytime it has a bow that direction. And eventually, gravity is going to cause that to sag, the weight of the floor, everything else up there. So you always want to put your bow or crown up. So I'm looking at it right now. The crown is that direction. That's what I'm going to face up. I'm going to do that for every single uh, rafter throughout the house. Chances are the majority of these are going to have some sort of bow to them whenever you get wood this long. Just double checking the wall to make sure it's close to plumb. Close as in, I don't want to be off for more than an eight to a quarter of an inch, because that affects me at the top. Now once we get both rafters up and met and actually mended together, before I attach the rafters to the top plate, this will be several days down the road, we can come back and kind of get any crooks out of the wall and get it final and straight. Now because I've already got so many walls up and attached to the other side, there ain't much budge in the wall above in the middle of the rooms right here where there's no walls in this room. But then there's still actually some flex up there and I can work all that out and then attach it to the rafters down the road. So you're going to see me doing a lot of level checking, especially in the next couple of episodes. Alright, so the reason that I just drew these lines the way that I did, now I can see that from across the room and know exactly right there is where I need to point my little laser so I'm getting the most accurate measurement that I possibly can.
All right, so this should give you your first look at ceiling height and how the rafters overall are gonna be. Now I know there is many different ways to do what I'm doing and I'm gonna get questioned, <laughs> no doubt. But I'm no home builder, I'm doing the best I can. But uh, the first question I'm probably gonna get is why I didn't build another stub wall with a bottom plate that goes on top of these two top plates, raise a wall up, you know, with the studs just like this. I still have to do that later and then nail my rafters into the side of studs. That's how it's commonly done in a house. Well, here's the reason why. I couldn't wrap my brain around how I have to do wall studs that are 16 inch on center per plan. That's what I'll have to do on my stub wall, but attic rafters that are 24. It was not gonna work out if I had built a stub wall up with a bunch of 16 inch rafters um, or 16 inch studs, then there was nowhere for me to nail my rafter to. Otherwise, I'd have just been putting a ton of extra studs up there or would have had it at 12 inch on center. So there is a bunch of two by sixes that way. So my plan is right now to do just what you've seen. Put that two by eight on the outside and I did that for a very specific reason. These two by eights, if you look down them, they want to twist and do everything in the world on you. That's very common for this lumber. I wanted this two by eight cap on the outside so I can nail in the end and start working them out and keeping them straight, keeping them from buckling and I'll start putting blocking in there so they don't twist on me. But I really wanted the nails in on the end down here. And again, 16 inch on center wall studs don't match up with 24 inch on center. So this is the best I could come up with. Now what I'll do is build a short stub wall later up in the attic, raise it right up, attach it down into all the rafters. I'll attach it into this end cap. We'll strap, do whatever else is, uh, is required or needed. But keep in mind at the end of all this too, you're sheathing over everything, which is basically a hurricane strap in and of itself whenever you put all that sheathing on the outside and nail in tying essentially every single thing together. So yeah, this, this is gonna be plenty good, but I, I can already see a lot of the questions coming in the comments on why are you doing it this way? especially on this end it's just the best i'd come up with in and again I'm, I'm not a home builder so uh this is what i thought to do i also forgot to mention we have started the campaign back again there's a few people that missed the opportunity to get these shirts a while back so we've probably got another nine or ten days left on that if you're interested links down in the description Thank you to everybody that's already supported the channel and purchased some of these shirts. And thank you to the people that are purchasing them now that the campaign's back open. So uh, in case you're not familiar with it, as soon as that campaign's over, that's when the shirts will print. Then they'll ship out to you shortly after that. So I've got to wrap this video up a bit short today. I know you're probably looking going, this is all you got done? The plastic net up there? Well, what y'all don't realize is I've been really behind on videos here lately. Um, we had multiple graduations, parties, you know, birthday parties, all kinds of stuff happened over the last couple weeks. We've got more coming up and that really eats into my recording, working, and editing time. Um, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm probably going to have to get to where there's a couple days a week that I skip to, to help eat up time for whenever I'm just not here, can't edit, can't record. And I think I'm going to go ahead and let y'all know, probably Mondays and Thursdays of every week, I don't think I'm going to post videos. Those are gonna be my days to get caught up, get ahead, or maybe have a video or two already recorded and ready to go for the days that things come up and I can't record. The other reason I've got to cut this very short is the truck is in the shop, the red truck's been in the shop for three days, had to fix a transmission leak. Um, just about impossible to get out of that truck on the ground out here. I don't have my two post car lift yet. So gotta go pick that up right now very quickly. So I've got to dog this work off. All right, so what's coming up next? There's still a ton to talk about up there. I've got some specialty straps um, with how we're gonna secure that two by eight, uh, end plate to the top plates. We've still got blocking and all to discuss, but ultimately what we're gonna be doing in the next few episodes, we're gonna continue to carry these studs 24 inch on center all the way down until we hit that 12 foot wall. Then we'll jump on the other side, do the same thing. That's when we'll then mend them together, get these bows out of them, put them on those marks that I'm making so they're perfectly centered. And then we'll actually be pulling that old metal connecting nail gun out again and metal connecting nailing them to this uh, wall as well as over here. I have got literally hundreds of hurricane straps and ties that we're gonna be putting all this and connecting together with. So thousands upon thousands of nails 
still to go here over the next many, many, many days. So that's what you can look forward to coming. But I'm excited to see the whole house with this done. Then eventually we'll deck the top. You can walk around up there. Like I said, we have the other stub walls to do. Um, and we'll mix all that up in between sheathing the outside. So a lot coming, still a lot of work to do. Well, thank y'all so much for watching. I've got to pack these tools up and hurry up and rush up there and pick up my truck. We'll catch y'all in the next video. All right, so I need to mark center. Ow, yellow glass. Gotcha. All right, so I need to mark center of these top posts right here so I can know where to measure from and cut off my studs or all right, so I need to mix. Mix. I need to mix. Golly. Fine, right down the center. A lot of y'all may know this. There's quite a few people that don't. There's so many uses to a T-square. 